This morning, fears two men are missing in floodwaters as Brisbane faces a drinking water shortage. The army ready to help clean up Bundaberg while residents guard their properties against looters. And the huge economic cost of this week's record floods in Queensland and New South Wales. This is 7 News Morning Edition with Anne Sanders. Good morning. Queensland's flood crisis isn't over yet. Brisbane escaped the worst of the flooding but is now facing a critical water shortage. Authorities warn some suburbs could run out of drinking water today and are pleading with people to conserve as much as they can. SES crews are searching for two men feared missing in floodwaters at Gatton. Bundaberg remains worst affected with 10% of the city's population flood affected. The Defence Force is on standby to help with the clean-up once water has received. The Governor-General will begin touring flooded communities in Queensland today. New South Wales communities have avoided the worst of the floods with the threat now over in the northern town of Maclean. Let's go first to Brisbane and Michael Scanlon is at Emergency Management Queensland headquarters. Good morning Michael. How serious is the water supply shortage there today? Yeah, good morning, Anne. Well, the water drinking water situation here in Brisbane is extremely concerning for emergency services. They have enough in storage at the moment that will last residents in those seven communities that will be directly affected until midday. Until midday. So they only have enough water um, until midday. After that, it gets to the, the point of critical. Um, there are workers in those water treatment plants at the moment um, trying to repair the uh, filtering systems to get those treatment plants back online um, so they can produce more water for those seven communities that are under threat. Um, the advice from the Premier and the Lord Mayor is still for people to conserve as much water as they possibly can, um, only to drink, clean or cook with, um, certainly no washing of the driveway or washing down homes. Um, we'll take a listen to what Bruce Grady from EMQ and the Premier of Queensland, Campbell Newman, had to say earlier this morning. Uh, we need people to conserve water. We have a guaranteed supply until noon today. Uh, beyond that, we cannot be sure. So. We have some emergency uh, water provisions in place for certain suburbs that could be at risk, uh, but we won't enact that unless we absolutely have to. We're starting to be able to clear those uh, plants and get them going, but they're not going to full capacity. So I just stress to all people across the Greater Brisbane Ipswich area, please conserve water. And Michael, there are also concerns today about two missing men. That's right, and at the moment the state's death toll in this flood disaster stands at four but police have grave concerns that that could now rise to six. Uh, two men 90 kilometres west of Brisbane in Gatton were travelling in a convoy. They were driving through flooded waters when they came into contact um, with those flood waters. Now, there's been a development this morning. Police have so far detected one of those cars. Earlier this morning, they found a second car. Um, so that, that is the latest development with those missing two men. They are desperate to hear from the two men in case they are in a community and cut off and can't get in contact with emergency services. But certainly, Anne, they are deeply concerned for the safety of those two men and are worried that 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 death toll could rise from four to six. Oh, that is worrying. Now, the flood threat isn't over for some residents in Rockhampton. That's right, Anne. Yeah, the, the floodwaters are predicted to go through Rockhampton on Saturday. Now, the, the local council there is saying that it won't be as bad as that flood in 2011, but they are still preparing for a significant event in that area. They are preparing for another cleanup as well and damage to major infrastructure uh, in that community. And that is also being felt right across the state at the moment. There are 50,000 business and businesses and properties across southeast Queensland without power. That is the biggest blackout this region has ever experienced here. There are 400 Energex crews uh, working on restoring power to those people and the businesses. Um, also, and we are hearing from producers that prices at the supermarket will now go up because there has been extreme damage to crops in Queensland. We are hearing that the damage bill is exceeding a billion dollars. And Michael Scanlon in Brisbane, thank you very much for the update, Michael. Bundaberg is the worst hit city in Queensland with 2,000 homes and 200 businesses inundated. Jeff Roosh is there for us again this morning. Hello, Jeff. Has that massive clean up operation begun? It has, Anne. The water's dropped something between half a metre and a metre. And as we were going around some of the flooded streets this morning, you'd, you'd visit a street, um, and come back about half an hour, 45 minutes later, and the enormous piles of debris that were there are suddenly neatly stacked into one great mound ready to be picked up. 
Residents are obviously fed up with having their, their city flooded like this. They want to do something about it and they want to get rid of it. But they're also concerned about what they're going to find in their homes when this water starts to drop. I spoke to one lady named Fiona Lobagaya this morning. This is what she had to say. It's just going to be pure devastation. The fridge is floating around in the house and there's just everything's everywhere. Um, my son got really upset when he saw his ball floating up the street, so it's going to be heart-wrenching, but we'll be one of thousands and we'll get through it. Yes, heartbreaking. And, Jeff, if that's not enough to cope with, locals are also trying to keep looters away. They have, Anne, that's right. As I've been around town this morning, I've spoken to a number of people who've seen people who, from what they say, could clearly have been doing nothing more than trying to get possessions out of other people's homes. Uh, residents have been conducting patrols themselves around flooded streets. They've been sleeping in the streets in some instances to try and safeguard the area they live in. A lady named Rebecca Ramage has been part of that effort. This is what she had to say. They possibly didn't get hit, but if they did, why go and get more stuff from people that have been here. They've lost what they own, pretty much everything. So why? Hard to fathom, isn't it? Jeff Bruce in Bundaberg, thank you very much. The residents of Ipswich worked together to try to save homes and businesses. Some were lucky when the Bremer River fell short of its peak, but the recovery will be a long one. Sunrise correspondent Michelle Tapper has the details. Good morning, Anne. Well, the clean-up is well underway out here at Ipswich, where up to 50 homes have been inundated. And unfortunately for many of the residents who were flooded on Monday night, this is the second time in two years. Sky Carruthers made a dangerous and daring escape as the raging floodwaters rose two and a half metres to the first floor of her home. Yeah, well, I had to swim the dogs out because it was chest deep. And what about your two young children? Um, they went over the fence. It wasn't as deep next door and the fire brigade lifted them over the fence and walked them out. Like many in West Ipswich, Sky is being supported by friends and volunteers helping to clean up mud and bring supplies. Out at Logan, the river peaked at nine metres last night, causing the biggest flood in more than two decades. The Logan River broke its banks at Waterford, flooding numerous roads in the area. We used to live on the river years ago and water used to come up then, but yeah, I've never seen anything like this. Oh, we came out to get some videos because in 2011 it was about five or six metres under this and this is extraordinary to be this high. And of course authorities are warning people not to cross flooded roads because they can quickly be swept away. Anne? Thank you. Residents in Grafton in northern New South Wales have begun the massive clean-up after yesterday's record floods. Sunrise, where the presenter James Tobin is there. Yeah, good morning, Anne. It was an historic day for the town of Grafton yesterday as the mighty Clarence River really put everyone on high alert. Grafton was under evacuation warnings and parts of Grafton, like where I am right now at Dovedale, was under evacuation orders from around about uh, yesterday morning. 36 hours or so I've been here and I've seen it go up and I've seen it go down. We're on Fry Street, one of the houses with uh, river frontage today with absolute water frontage. You can see here that the sandbags were the only thing holding the water back. The flood levees were breached. These sandbags, you can see the first layer soaking wet, the second layer dry. Anything more than that, and this whole area of Dovedale and North Meadow would have been underwater. Over in South Grafton, on the other side of the Clarence, some buildings did go under. Buildings that are built on the other side of the levee walls. The Ex Services Club and the Bowling Club flooded. Around about midday, we saw the river peak. 8.08 metres in Grafton itself. Here at Dovedale, slightly further down river, it reached 7.95 and residents now breathing a bit of a sigh of relief as the worst has passed. You can see just how quickly it's fallen. As quickly as it rose, as quickly it goes down. We've already seen a drop of about a metre and a half this morning. Towns further down river, Almurra, Brushgrove, McLean, they're still cut off and are waiting for the waters to fall. Uh, if you're travelling north, the Pacific Highway from Grafton remains closed. The Pacific Highway southbound also remains closed. However, you can get further south by taking back roads to Coffs Harbour and then continuing down. 
So for the residents of Grafton today, breathing a bit of a sigh of relief as the mighty Clarence was held back only just. Back to you, Anne. Thanks, James. Insurance claims have already hit $130 million as residents begin a massive clean-up. The advice is to make sure you get as much evidence as possible, including photographs and receipts of items bought and lost, to satisfy the insurance company. Also, write down notes of how it all happened. When did the water come? What time of day was it? Uh, was it fast-flowing water? Was it dirty water? Uh, all this makes a difference. The Insurance Council has a hotline if you've lost your policy details but know your insurer. That number is 1800 734 621. And you can help the victims of this week's floods and storms. The Queensland Flood Appeal has been launched through the Red Cross. Details on how to donate are on our website. And as if Queenslanders didn't already have enough to deal with, they may soon be facing another weather threat. A low pressure system is developing 1,000 kilometres off Cairns, which has a 20% chance of becoming a cyclone on Friday. The Weather Bureau is due to give another update this afternoon. Coming up next in 7 News, business and finance, the Prime Minister preparing to cut spending. 7 News to now. I'm Ann Sanders. Thanks for your company. Bye for now.